Hi and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Just a follow up on the Chinese 250 sized mini quad frame. Now I've just been building the second one of these and as I've learned from bitter experience when it comes to Chinese products never judge them all by just one sample. Uh, it seems that there's so much variation sometimes that you really have to buy two or three of them before you can judge accurately whether you're getting value for money. Now the first quad frame went together really easily and I was quite impressed. On the second one however uh, I've discovered a few problems. First of all, these arms. Now the, the holes for the motors, they haven't milled these slots far enough in towards the center for most of the motors that you'll find for mini quads these days. So, and also there are only two and a half millimeter slots, uh, sorry, two millimeter slots on this one. For example, I'll get my dial caliper out and we'll measure this so you can see, hopefully it'll show up on the camera here. So that's 2.1 millimeters and that's after I've actually widened it a little bit. Before I widened it, it was actually about 1.9 millimeters so the two millimeter screws wouldn't fit into the slots. I had to do a lot of fiddling and messing about to make those slots a little bit wider so the screws would fit in and then I had to mill out two of the slots so they came closer into the center because these motors have two widely spaced bolts and two narrowly spaced bolts. So, uh, so much work involved in working with carbon fiber and getting these so the motors would actually fit that's a bit of a downside. Now on the original we have this lovely carbon fiber, see the sheen on there, nice and shiny, but on this one three of the arms were like that, but here's the fourth arm, look at this, this is the fourth one, I don't know if you can see, but if I turn it over you can see it's actually quite marred, it's not um, anywhere near as nice as the one, you can see a sort of a, a weave of the pattern in there, they haven't used as much resin in this, so the actual weave of the cloth is coming through in the texture of the resin, this is an inferior piece of carbon fiber. Also, also I haven't touched these slots but let's measure how wide they are. These ones are 2.7 millimeters wide. Actually well, I might have a lot. No, it's 2.7 at the narrowest I think. Let's try it again. Try and get this lined up dead on. Yeah 2.5, 2.6 actually. Two and a half millimeters wide. These are half a millimeter wider than the slots in this one. Why? Why? It's just a case of um, quality control of course there is no quality control and if you look carefully on this one you'll see along this edge here this has been battered and bashed and it's gouged and scraped so this arm is an orphan that they threw in the box to make up the fourth arm uh, I'm not really happy with that but it gets better I just received another one of these 250 Chinese mini quads and that's what I got this is an arm of that now again it has the two and a half millimeter slots rather than the two millimeter ones but you'll notice that the carbon fiber is quite different Look at the difference in that. Is this really carbon fibre? Well, I don't know. I'll measure them, see what the weights are like, but it's obviously a very different form of twill to the other one. So the, the, there's already some massive variations in the quality and in the materials being used. So yeah, I don't know. You may get a good one, you may not. That's one of the risks you take when you buy an off-brand or a generic Chinese product like these 250 mini quad frames. I haven't flown the original one yet that I put together, but I will do shortly. I just thought I'd bring you this in the meantime, so if you're thinking of rushing out and buying a mini quad from China, one of the generic ones, you may not get anything like the one that I reviewed initially. And here's one of the frame members from the latest Kit and if you look at it, I'll get the angle on there, you can see these holes, that is absolutely atrocious. It's almost like they've been punched rather than drilled. Let's have a close-up look at that. If I can get the angle of the light right, you can probably see how these holes are very rough finished around the edges. Might have to get me, oh there's a good example, look at this one. That's Look, it's been almost punched through. The tooling has probably been so blunt at this stage, it's just been forced through the carbon fibre and it's ripped it more than drilled. I'll get the macro lens out, we'll have a closer look at that. So now we can see just how badly that carbon's been damaged by the drilling, call it drilling process, and, and how absolutely blunt the tooling must have been to produce this. Quite damage to the weave in there. Um, the slots, yeah, see they're pretty bad too, but not as bad as some of these holes, I've got to say. This is really, really awful. Um, but I guess it's what you expect. Um, I don't know if they've had it on a purple table, but look, that's picked up some fibres from the from the table but yeah I mean I'm not I'm not totally impressed at all and it's no wonder I've had to do so much filing and fettling to make the bits fit because when the tooling gets blunt and worn the holes become undersized or oversized the grooves aren't straight they tend to wander when they're trying to mill straight lines it just gets really really nasty so yeah um, as I said I think in my original video if you want to save some money then yeah you can get these 
Um, but if you really want to avoid the frustration, then, I mean, look at this, it's terrible. If you want to avoid the frustration, then buy a brand name that's had some quality control. And just in case you think I'm making all this up, this is one of the new arms that Blackout sent me, a six, arm for six inch props on the Blackout Mini H quad. Now look at the finish on the carbon there. That's a mirror finish, both sides mirror finish. And let's take a really close look at these holes. See how well the milling's been done. Here we are, this is the macro view. And look, see that, that milling there is very nice, sharp tooling, accurately milled. The edges are nicely finished. This is what you get, you know, if you have quality control in place. Um, and the whole blackout machine has been like this, all the blackout parts I've received. And uh, looks like the same with the QAV250. These name brands um, just seem to, the, the people who make them, or at least, you know, the people who have them made, just take care of a quality control. You get a much better finished product. It's not going to be warped. It's not going to be bent. It's not going to be horrible and require filing and fettling to actually get the bits to fit. And they're using a nice quality carbon fiber. Hey, that's where your money goes. And finally, at least I hope it's finally because there's been so many things wrong with this latest carbon quad from China. This is the top plate and you'll notice that it's, it doesn't sit flat on the bench. It doesn't. In fact, I don't know if I can get on the camera, but it's actually got a twist in it. It's actually twisted this frame and it's bent. So, because I noticed when I put the quad together originally that um, the arms weren't parallel. The front arms weren't parallel with the back arms. It had a big twist in it. And I was able to remove that by judiciously tweaking the bolts and adjusting them with various tensions and holding it in the opposite direction while I tightened them. So I managed to straighten out the quad, but it's still not perfect. It's still got a bit of a twist in it, actually. And it's because all the frame members are damn well twisted. I mean, that's crap. Um, obviously, I don't know, maybe they pulled them from the mold too quickly or something when they made the carbon sheet. I don't know, this is, must be third grade carbon sheet perhaps, or is it maybe the way it's been shipped, but I don't think so because the other one was shipped the same way and it wasn't all warped and twisted. Ah, oh, really, um, I'm glad I made this follow-up video because to be honest, the quality control or the consistency at least is atrocious. So there you go, I said, there's a reason why you might want to buy a brand name and I think I've shown you in this video exactly why that is. It's taken me hours hours and hours of extra work to get this thing together and semi-straight and you know even now it's going to be a bit of a mission it'll probably move over time if that because the carbon itself is twisted you know oh, i don't know but anyway i hope i've shown you the reason why the brand names cost so much more people have said to me why would you pay five times as much for a brand name mini quad when you can buy these chinese ones well you know that is a personal choice that's something you've got to decide for yourself but if you want something that's going to, you know is going to fly out of the box you're not going to have to spend half your life filing and cutting and you know frittling away to make it fit and when you finally finish it it's actually going to be square then i think you, you know your money has to go on the brand name product if you want something that's really cheap and you're prepared to put in the hours of effort required to make it come close to the brand name in terms of the quality and the fit and finish and everything, then yeah, you can buy a Chinese mini quad and you may be quite happy with it. But watch for part two of the Chinese mini quad review because that's when I put it to the test in the air and ultimate, ultimately that's got to be the bottom line. Now if you've got any questions, put them on the bottom of this video in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. If you've got comments, do the same and I will try and read every one of them. And I thank you for your input on these things. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I now have to get back to the good old bench. Bye for now.